What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Zevi here bringing you guys yet another MHA what if for the week. This time we're going to be covering the character of Broly and what would happen if Izuku was his reincarnation. Before this video starts though guys, I quickly want to let you guys know that the full series of this is already out if you are a member. So if you are one, definitely make sure to check it out since you guys get the full thing early. That said though guys, if you guys want that, just become a member and you know with any other video if you guys enjoy it. Consider leaving a like, subscribing, and turning those post notifications on so you guys get updated when part two drops. That said, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Okay, so like every other what if, this is pretty much going to be starting the day of Izuku's birth. I mean, it's pretty basic, it's nothing too crazy. Let's just say that the day of Izuku's birth, he pretty much wakes up and, you know, Inko is happy, Sashi's happy, and they take him home, right? The day that he's born, it was kind of strange because some strange occurrence actually ended up happening that day that they weren't able to identify whether it was the cause of Deku or it was the cause of some hero incident outside that was going on potentially. Now, what happened? Basically, for a very, very brief moment when the doctors were pulling Izuku out, like his outburst of like just crying basically made it so that his aura just flared out, right? Like his rage was able to literally shake the building, right? And with him shaking the building, the second that he got taken out, like he was, he had his eyes closed, so they couldn't tell, but he was in his wrathful form. He was literally in his wrathful form the day he was born. And with this comes like them not really knowing what happened, but Izuku was pretty much the root cause of everything. So he goes home and let's just say that Izuku grows up like every other kid. Now, obviously, Izuku is going to be having a bit of a fluctuating power level, but for every other kid, he is a whole lot stronger than everybody else. I mean, Izuku was able to lift couches and fridges with one arm when he was like four years old. It was completely insane. They always just assumed that Izuku had some sort of super strength quirk until they noticed that Izuku was not just strong, but he was incredibly fast. And not to mention that Izuku just, it seemed as if he was just like glowing with potential. Izuku was just gift, this gifted child, right? And Izuku was always told that he was gifted and he was told that he was going to essentially be destined for great things by the doctors and stuff like that. And because Izuku was deemed to have a super strength quirk or maybe an enhancement quirk, everybody thought that he was pretty cool for that even bakugo himself was really really friendly and kind to deku just because of the simple fact that he also looked up to deku because you know could you it, just think about it like this you have a friend he has he's really cool he has superpowers you're obviously going to give him a little bit more respect and that's pretty much what bakugo did and it was to the point of meat riding sometimes but eventually one day would come when bakugo would be in class and suddenly pop 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 his explosion quirk would have activated this would lead bakugo to think to himself that now he can finally keep up with deku now he can finally do the same things that he can do he can maybe even get on his level or even more so bakugo for the next couple of months would pretty much begin to try to test deku slowly like doing little things to him just to see like how far he can take it and you know how much deku would just let slide like he would start by taking his crayons then he would like he would like push him or like make jokes about him and be like sorry deku and deku would always be like it's fine bakugo don't worry you know sometimes deku would be walking with his lunch and like bakugo would just throw it on the ground and he'd be like sorry deku and you know deku would just continue letting things slide right because the kid's nice, you know, he's he's not going to be a rude dude who's just going to be like, oh, you dropped my napkin, like, I'm going to hit you, you know what I mean? So, he's a cool kid, he's still a small child at, at, at the end of the day, and nothing really crazy is happening, right? But after a few couple of months, Bakugo would just let it get to him, right? He would train with his quirk, he would realize that explosions are quite powerful, and he would think, hey, Izuku has strength, but if I just blow him up, then he can't beat me, right? So one day, he would pretty much go up to Deku and shoot an explosion at his face, right? And Deku, after having this explosion in his face, would shoot to the ground and be like, Bakugo, what was that for? And, you know, Bakugo would be like, hey, I just wanted to know if who was stronger. And Deku's like, it doesn't matter, Bakugo. 
we're both supposed to be friends. And Bakugo's like, yeah, but I just found out who the stronger one of us is. And he just walks away with his little friends. And Izuku just sat there wondering like what he even did to provoke this. Like he thought him and Bakugo were friends. And so Izuku just pretty much is like, whatever. And due time skip, we would basically be in, let's say, we're now going to jump to sixth grade, right? They're going to be in sixth grade. And Izuku would just be chilling with his friend group. This time he isn't ostracized or a loser. He has tons of friends and people still believe that he's very, very strong. Of course, Deku, whenever they're in PE class and gym class, would smash through every record. I mean, his physical and speed is just incredible. Not to mention that over the last couple of years, Izuku definitely would have discovered the ability of flight randomly one day when he ended up jumping a little too high and realized that he didn't hit the ground. He kind of closed his eyes and realized he was floating. Then he fell on his head and I was like, ah, you know, that really hurt, right? And from there, he kind of just began practicing that. And now he's pretty skilled at flying, punching, and, you know, running. Those are the main things that Izuku has right now. He still hasn't discovered a key control quite yet, like shooting key blasts and stuff like that, because that's going to come at a later date. But what would happen is basically Izuku would be in the cafeteria, right? The dude walks up, you know, he looks at the lunch lady. He sees the options that are for food and he sees the chicken sandwiches. On this day, you know, let's just say that he's a little hungrier than usual. So he grabs one of the sandwiches and when nobody's looking, like he would just turn left, right, grab another one, shove it into his pocket right and from here izuku goes on to pretty much go to the front pay for his food and then you know sit down at his lunch table with his friends when izuku would be there bakugo would walk over to him and would pretty much grab his tray of food and just throw it onto the ground izuku looks at bakugo and he's like bakugo why do you gotta be such a dick and bakugo looks at him and goes what'd you say nerd would you just call me i should blow you to heaven come right now and Deku is just like, whatever, Bakugo. He then goes on to grab another sandwich from his pocket. And Bakugo quite literally like spits in Deku's. He literally spits in Deku's face, bro. That's the ultimate disrespect. So Deku is like, he smears it off of his face and he takes a bite of a sandwich. And he's just like, leave me alone, Bakugo. And Bakugo then smacks it out of his hand, right? Q, she threw my burger out the car. Uh, I don't know if you guys get that reference, but basically, um, Bakugo smacks the burger out of like Deku's hand, right? And Deku's like, my chicken sandwich. No, no, how? You know, no, no. He, he like in cute anime Dragon Ball fashion, he's like, how dare you? Like, it's almost like a moment where Boma got slapped by Beerus pretty much. And Deku just goes crazy. He's like, my sandwich. You know what I mean? And his eyes, they turn into their wrathful form. His aura explodes. And the like the people around him get sent flying. Bakugo gets sent crashing to the wall. And he stands up and he looks at Bakugo and he's like, you know, Bakugo, I've let a lot of things slide over the years, but not again. He rushes to Bakugo and literally slaps him onto the ground. And Bakugo has no answer. He tries to throw an explosion at Deku and hold his knees up and try to kick at him. But Deku literally grabs him with one leg and throws him to the other side of the cafeteria. And Bakugo goes crashing out the window, mind you. Deku from here literally just looks at the looks at the wall that's there and just opens his mouth and goes Poof! and a gigantic blast a mouth beam would shoot from his mouth right and it almost hits bakugo had it not been for his quick reaction time right bakugo jumps out of the way and deku flies out from the crater that he had just created in the wall right he looks at bakugo and it's at this moment that all of his friends go up to him and they're like deku and deku looks around and he finally snaps out of it and he's like i'm sorry he looks at Bakugo on the ground who has genuine fear in his eyes because he, he felt like he was going to die, bro. Like, he's never seen Izuku this mad and never knew that he had this much power. Deku ragdolled him. He showed him that the difference between he and Izuku was monumental. It's not something to laugh at. Deku's strength difference to Bakugo is literally the difference from the ground to Mount Everest. That's how high the difference is. It's probably even higher than that. And keep in mind, Izuku's power is is so fluctuating. Like it could be at zero, and then it could go to a hundred real quick, just based off of his rage. And that's something that just happened. Izuku rushes out of the cafeteria, and so the next day that comes around, Bakugo pretty much ends up making a story about how Deku picked on him and how Deku's the mean one. 
So everybody begins to kind of be very wary of Deku because they don't want him to have outbursts. So they all start trying to like keep away from him. And the friends that he does have do stay friends with him, but they're just a little more worried. So Izuku kind of spends the last couple of years at his school kind of feeling bad for what he did to Bakugo. So he doesn't exactly end up trying to defend himself and say what really happened. And so, you know, he just lives day by day activities just like any other kid would, right? But eventually, one day, he would be picked up by his mother, right? His mom, Inko, just scoops him and she's like, so, Izuku, how was school? He looks at her and he's like, good. And from here, he pulls a, you know, look out the window and just stare out, you know, kind of like that iconic scene that everybody does. Like, they'll sit in the window and they'll kind of look a little sad. He looks up at the at one of the rooftops and there it is, one of those gigantic billboards that just says fandom on it. And Izuku's like, fandom? What's, what's that? Well... Let me explain. As anime fans, we love to show our support to our favorite shows by rocking anime apparel. But something I'm pretty sure we can all agree on is it's so expensive. So I've partnered up with Fandom to bring you all affordable, high quality anime merch that you are sure to love. And if you use my code Zether at checkout, you can even get an extra 10% off the already affordable merch. Keep in mind, it does come from overseas sellers, so its sizing is going to be different since it's overseas. That said, let's get back into the video. You guys like what I did there? You see, like, like that little jump? <laughs> Anyways, jumping back into the story, we pretty much picked the story off the day that the teacher would pretty much end up telling everybody about what they're going to be doing for the rest of their lives. He begins to kind of joke around with the class and be like, so here are your career aptitude tests. And he's like, Ugh. But suddenly the teacher just throws him up into the air and he's like, I know you all want to become heroes. And Izuku, you know, he does definitely want to become a hero, but he's just become more wary of his own powers. Eventually, the day would come, though, however, when Izuku is simply just chilling in class, right? And uh, essentially, what would end up happening is that, you know, he is just sitting there and Bakugo would just stand up on his desk. And essentially, everything that happens in canon would happen with the exception of Izuku being mistreated by Bakugo. Because Bakugo hasn't spoken to Izuku in so long due to the fact that of what happened in sixth grade, right? He completely, like, like shut him off. But Izuku, after Clash, grabs his bag and goes underneath the tunnel just like usual. Now, I would try to make a big deal out of the sludge villain attacking Deku, but it's really not going to be. Just because, I mean, it's going to be relatively easy for Deku to handle a sludge villain. I mean, let's say that the sludge villain does get onto Deku. He expands his aura. Boo-hoo, sludge villain's done. Splattered everywhere. And that's what essentially happens. All Might then comes in, bottles the villain up, says what's up to Deku, Deku fangirls, yes, I said fangirl, and then All Might jumps off, and just for the plot of the story, I'm going to be saying that All Might still does drop the bottle, and Bakugo does end up getting pretty much captured in the sludge, right, Bakugo gets captured in the sludge, and this time around, when All Might arrives and Deku gets there as well, you know, both of them are watching what's happening. And Deku's just about to act when Bakugo screams, let me go. And he shoots a powerful explosion that blasts the sludge off. And he finally realizes that's what he has to do. So he just pours all of his sweat. Like he's sweating right now because he's being like heated up and his explosions. And there's just fire everywhere. So Bakugo's just sweating and sweating and sweating. And we're just going to be saying that for story purposes, he's a lot stronger than he is in the original. Just because he has Deku and he's been wanting to close that gap for years now. But even now, he still is aware that that gap is still massively large but what would end up happening is he's able to snatch that villain off of himself and then he flies up into the air and just goes you want to take care of my body and the people in the heroes are like kid get down from there and bakugo just goes howitzer impact and he comes flying in and blows the sludge villain at kingdom come and all might just watches that act of heroism and he's like that's my successor and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys saw that coming from the moment that I had Bakugo free himself instead of Deku. But yeah, Bakugo is going to be the successor of One for All. And you guys might be like, bro, why Bakugo? Like, why? Well, first of all, it's it, like it, it's for a good cause. Trust me, guys. Trust me, guys. Like, he's still not going to be stronger than Deku, but it's for like, like it's for this kind of story that I want to go for. Just trust me, guys. Just bear with me. OK, don't click off the video yet. But Anyways, the 10 months would happen and All Might would train with Bakugo instead of Deku. And during these 10 months, Deku would pretty much just be hit in the gym every single day. And essentially, Izuku, his body shape is like, he's tall. But he's nowhere near the size of like Broly in the actual anime. But 
he is pretty big. He's like, let's say he's at around Ida's height and he is like very muscular. Or let's say he's a little smaller than Ida, but he's like very muscular. He's not as muscular as Broly, obviously, but let's say it's, it's like more compact, right? It's kind of like how Broly looks when he's like not enraged. So he's like kind of skinny, but like a little bit even more than that. And just because of his age, like his muscles haven't developed that far. But, you know, let's just say that he's around that like level of like build. Like he has like a little bit of a Vegeta build, right? Like he still looks muscular, but, you know, it doesn't look massive, right? But regardless of that, Deku would end up training during those 10 months. And, you know, he works on his flying, his punching, his, you know, his kicks and stuff like that. And what Zuku would pretty much end up doing during these 10 months is weighted training, as well as some martial arts to come, you know, to compete with everything that he's doing. He would also end up kind of uh, continuing to work on his key blast and stuff like that, and would even end up developing, you know, the key blast that Broly would use. And honestly, when it comes to the key blast that Broly uses, I'm really not sure what his what is like his key blast names are. I'd have to look that up really quick. Um, let's see, let's see, let, let's you know we're both about to find something out really quick. Let's see, Broly's Broly's blast. Google what what what's the name? What's the name? Um, Eraser Cannon. Eraser Cannon. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds awesome eraser cannon yeah that's sick but basically what what he would work on like mostly would just be those key blasts that he can shoot from his mouth to have that be a regular thing kind of like how nappa does it and he would also work on small miniature key blasts that he can shoot from his hand but he's mostly a brawler so he's more like an all might type of combatant and he obviously does have the um the uh what what what, what was it again the buster cannon i think uh Oh my god, the fact that I already forgot it, even though I literally just read it. it yeah, the eraser cannon. Yeah, eraser cannon. Yeah, so he masters on that. And that's really all that he really works on, honestly. He just gets a lot more stronger when it, when it comes to his like, power level and stuff like that. And obviously, he's never going to reach his full potential until he gets like truly enraged the day that he maybe snaps into a Super Saiyan. But I don't even think that he'll be needing that at all in this series. I mean, everybody here is so weak compared to him already that... Who knows, maybe it might happen, maybe it might not. But regardless of that fact, we are going to be jumping back into the story and let's just say that we pick up with the entrance exams, right? The entrance exams happen and I don't really see the written portion being too difficult for Izuku. I still think he's going to be a very smart individual. So he's going to be passing that with relative ease. And when it comes to the robot portion, this is where things finally begin to get exciting. Because what I do see happening here is Deku being able to use his flight, you know, his punching, his kicks and stuff like that to essentially just fly through the robots the second that President Mike goes, go, right? He flies in and just key blast, key blast punch he would grab the robots and fly into the air and like slam them onto the ground and just fly through robots themselves it would be like an omni-man level of just destruction and chaos that he would be putting through and he would be putting on a massive show right eventually what would end up happening is that you know he would begin to learn as he is fighting these robots and like understand their fighting patterns and just get better and better as he goes and eventually the zero pointer would actually be let out when the zero pointer is let out by Principal Nezu, I blatantly just see Izuku looking at it and finally being able to use his eraser cannon. He charges it up, obviously, and he just shoots it at the zero pointer, blasting the entire top of it off. As the zero pointer just collapses behind, like to the like it falls backwards, and he's able to just fly in, grab Araraka, and like bring her to safety. And when he grabs Araraka, she like blushes a lot because she feels the muscle and stuff like that. And Izuku is like, are you okay? And she just nods, she's like, mm-hmm. From here, Izuku sets her down and, you know, pretty much just begins to walk away, knowing that he did pretty great. Eventually, he would end up getting his acceptance letter, and Izuku would actually get number one when it comes to the robot portion, just because even though Bakugo has one for all now, he's still not going to be as impressive as Deku when he's, you know, trying his absolute best to just destroy, right? It's kind of like a Hulk smash moment, right? But ultimately, Deku would end up kind of um, just going, getting into UA and pretty much reporting for his first day of class. What would end up happening here is we basically get our moment with Izuku being in the uh, being in the classroom and walking in and just kind of being like, yo, guys, like, um, how are you? You know what I mean? Like, or <sighs> I feel like I was just talking out of my butt for the last couple of seconds. OK, scratch everything that I just said. Deku walks in the classroom. He sits down. He's not really talking to anybody until Araraka walks in. 
And she looks at him and what what, what what did Araka say? I feel like she would say something along the lines of, hey, you're the boy who saved me, right? Uh, name's Broly, right? And Deku just looks at her and he's like, yeah, that's my name. And, you know, Bakugo hearing and seeing that Deku got in, he just scoffs and he's like, they just let anyone in nowadays, right? And from here, he goes on to pretty much just listen to Aizawa when he tells him to go outside and they all take the quirk apprehension test. Now, when it comes to most of the trials, Deku and Bakugo would actually be on an even level when it comes to the things that they're doing. And this would kind of just cause Bakugo's head to just get filled up with this idea that he's finally going to be able to finally destroy Deku. He's finally going to be able to beat him at something. This is just what Bakugo is blatantly thinking to himself just because of the fact that Deku has been kind of taking it easy for the last couple of uh, events, not really going all out fully because he's not enraged. He's calm. So he's just doing his best that he can now. So, you know, it wouldn't be that impressive to Bakugo per se, but, you know, they both would end up getting first and second, respectively, with Bakugo being first because he was tryharding, right? And, you know, Deku just being cool with second place. Eventually, after all would be said and done, Bakugo would walk out with his backpack and bump into Deku and be like, hey, Deku, you know, you remember sixth grade? I'm done being your, I'm done fearing you now. You're gonna go back to being my punching bag really soon, Deku. As from here, Izuku looks at Bakugo with a blank expression and just kind of just is like, whatever, Bakugo. As he walks away and Bakugo just chuckles and he's like, don't forget, Deku, you're second place now. As Deku just walks away and Bakugo's like, pathetic.